Welcome. Welcome to the Working Artist Circle Facebook Live. Um, that's not from you. Um, I was actually going to start out today because I thought, okay, yay, people are here. Oh, wait, I have to wear my glasses to check these. Yes, yes, hello from Denmark. All right, North Carolina. Woohoo, Sherry's here. Phil's here. Yes, great. Okay, welcome. Thank you for being here, you guys. Um, I'm super excited about this. This is fun. Okay, so I thought while we're waiting for people to join, I would start out by telling you a story, more of a cautionary tale. It's the story of when I fell out of love with art. Probably not what you expected on International Artist Day, but I wonder if you've ever fallen out of love with art. Anyway, so you might have known that I was an art dealer. If you know my story, you know that I was an art dealer uh, for many, many, many years. And it was um, a really incredible experience. It wasn't like your normal art dealer. I had a large studio. I had a gallery, yes, so I was a tra traditional art dealer in that way, but I, the majority of my job, 80% of my sales came out of this studio. I had a huge studio with different printmakers working there, and we would invite artists to come from all over the world to make prints with us. And these were not G clays, these were never ever reproductions. They were original prints. The artist would come into our studio, which was a collaborative studio, and they would collaborate with me and with the team to create original limited edition prints on paper. Again, these weren't G clays. The, we were using techniques and traditions that were hundreds and hundreds of years old. In fact, some of our, uh, some of our equipment went back like pre-World War I. It was, pretty incredible. And the reason that artists would come to work with us, like if you had a, a really famous artist, people always ask, well, why would they come to your studio when they've got their own? Because of that opportunity to collaborate and to work with technologies and techniques that they'd never done before, we were really well known for pushing the boundaries technically about what could what could be done. So I think for artists, it was a way to to play and to have a different way of working and to get input from other people. I think sometimes, as you probably know, we work too much in our heads alone. So running the studio was heaven, right? I'd come out of art school. I didn't know anything about being an artist. And the next thing you know, I find myself the head of this studio and I'm able to work with all of my art heroes. I can pick up the phone and call them and invite them to come in and, and stay with us and work with us. And I also, this was my favorite part. If I saw an artist um, whose work I admired, but they weren't really known in the marketplace, I could invite them in to make prints with us. And then I could be showing those prints to galleries and to museums and to collector, collectors and interior designers all over the country. So I would help them start to build their career that way. I love that kind of work. Like I said, this was heaven. I, I had a reputation. I traveled all the time. I was making money. At the same time, you probably know every time something starts out as heaven, it often turns into hell. And my job turned into hell. I want you to think about this for a second. So the reason, okay, so say an artist would come to work with us, a well-known artist. Say they're making canvases, just for the sake of the math, I'll say their canvases were selling for $15,000, right? Now, not everyone can afford a $15,000 canvas. So sometimes those artists would come in and make work with us so that they could reach a new marketplace. And if they made a limited edition print on paper, I could sell that work for say 15,000. Instead, that was my, in fact, that was my average price point, 1,500, I'm nervous, sorry, $1,500. Now, because I was selling wholesale, I would have to give 50% of that to a gallery just like you do. So now I have $750 on every sale. But wait, what about the artist? I had to split that profit with the artist. So now I've got $375 on that sale. Now, I was doing everything you had to do, have to do. I was picking up the telephone and making cold calls. Sometimes people were hanging up on me or being rude. I was knocking on doors and introducing myself. Sometimes those doors would slam in my face or 
or people would be rude. Um, I was doing this not for one artist. I was doing this for like 20, 30 artists. And I want you to consider this too. I was having to pay the overhead on a 5,000 square foot studio, plus a gallery space, plus all of the employees, plus whining and dining the artists, plus whining and dining the clients. So if you think about how difficult it is for you to make a living as an artist or for any artist to make a living as an artist, I want you to consider me selling each work for $375 on average and trying to keep this monster afloat. I was a selling machine. That's all I did. I woke up in the morning and I went to sleep at night thinking about selling art. Every single person I knew was a prospect. I couldn't stop selling because I couldn't afford to stop selling. Um, and the worst part was I wasn't selling my own stuff. I wasn't even making my own stuff. I couldn't, I didn't have time. Wouldn't that be hell if all you, if your job was just selling art and you never got to make art? And let's be honest, those, those clients, well, I kind of alluded to it. They weren't always so nice. And sometimes the artists weren't always so nice and maybe weren't always so grateful. Sometimes they could be a little bit entitled. And um, it was a difficult, difficult job. And I found myself out of love with art. When I woke up in the morning, the first thing I said, swear to God, was, I hate art. When I went to bed at night, the last thing I said was, I hate art. I'm, I'm getting emotional just remembering it because it just, I just took all of that the wrong way. You know, I blamed art for my unhappiness and I wanted to get as far away from art as I could. I wanted to maybe work with wine, maybe become a wine dealer or pour wine in a bar. I just didn't want to be around art anymore. So what happened was I have this very dear friend who has an incredible eye for art. And I say that because we share the same eye. Like if she tells me something is good, I know I'm gonna like it and vice versa. We just have, we're in touch with one another that way. And she called me one day and said, there is a big exhibition happening in New York. Um, you need to go, you need to meet this artist. You need to find a way to work with him. The artist's name was Gregory Colbert and the name of the exhibition was Ashes and Snow. If you don't know it, you should look it up. It was really something quite remarkable. But I didn't know that at the time. I just knew I was gonna go to New York to go to this show, another show, I thought, to meet an artist, another artist, I thought, and look at his work. Ugh, I hate art. Because that's where I was in my head. I went to New York, I called the artist studio. Hi, can I get an appointment to see Gregory while I'm in town? No, you can't, he's too busy what? I called again. I called again. You know, I may have been selling art for very, not very much money, but I actually sold millions of dollars in art. And I think the reason I was so successful selling art is because I don't like people saying no to me. So I just kept calling his studio back again and again. It, they never did let me see him, but they finally said, tell you what, the opening um, to the exhibition is tomorrow night. We'll give you a ticket. I'm like a ticket? I need a ticket to go to this thing? Who is this guy? Okay, I'll take the ticket, I'll go. So I show up, the show is at the pier. Um, if you've ever seen Ashes and Snow, you'll understand it's not just a normal show, it was an event and this was the first night. I realized as I was going to New York that there were billboards all over the place about this show. So I started to get a sense that this was something much different than what I had imagined or not my normal art exhibition. And when I show up, there's like a line of people down the street and inside, I mean, you just wouldn't believe how many people were there. This place was massive. It was hundreds of people, maybe even a thousand. I have no idea. I'm not good with, with counting that, but we were literally elbow to elbow in this huge space. And I thought, I'm never going to find the artist. I don't even know what he looks like. And look at all these people. I'd have to fight my way to look at the art. Oh, I hate art. So 
I fought my way through. Um, I was in a really crabby mood. I wasn't in the mood to look at the work. And then I saw the first piece and something changed. Something in me went, wow. The, the craftsmanship, the, the technique he used, the paper he was working on, the beauty of the image, it just, it just opened my eyes. And then I went to the next piece and I felt my heart start to open. And then I went to the next piece and that piece was so beautiful that it actually spoke to me and it made me cry. And I realized that I loved art and that I was blaming art for all these other issues in my life, but it wasn't art's fault. Um, it, it was a really profound moment. And the funny thing is, is that, um, like I said, it was wall to wall people. And I heard some people next to me, there's a little group of people next to me talking amongst themselves. And I don't know what it was, there was something in their conversation that made me recognize that the artist must be in that group. So I turned and looked and I couldn't figure out who was who and then they all dispersed. But then there was just one guy standing there for just a brief second before the crowd came back around him. It was just he and I. And I said, are you Gregory? Are you the artist? And he said, yes. How did I meet him with all these people? And I said, I have been stalking you and I have been pestering your staff. And, and he said, are you the girl from Arizona? <laughs> that was me. I said, yes, I am. And I said, I really want to work with you. I've come to New York to meet you. I've brought a portfolio to show you some of our work. And he said, well, I'm a little busy right now, um, but I'll tell you what, we're going to a party tomorrow night at a collector's house. Do you want to come with? You can bring your portfolio. Everyone would love to see it. And I did. And I made friends with Gregory and with his girlfriend, the artist named Caroline Dahali, who is also a beautiful artist. I never did work with Gregory, but he invited me back to New York the next time he was there, gave me a private tour of, of his studio, showed me how he worked, talked to me about his ideas and his images. You can see how I'm just falling more and more in love with art now. I mean, this is my new favorite artist. and. He just blew my mind. Both he and Caroline taught me new ways of thinking about art, new ways of selling art, new ways of being an artist, new ways of living as an artist. That's the power of art. And because I went to that show, because I saw that work, that's the reason we're here today. The thousands of artists who've taken the Working Artist Masterclass or worked with me in one way or another, I wouldn't have met any of them if it hadn't been for that show. So I never want you to doubt the power of your own work and who it can affect because you don't know. If, that, if I hadn't gone to that show, if I hadn't seen that work, I'd be pouring wine somewhere and we would be having a much different conversation today. Okay, so raise your hand if you believe in the power of art too. Yay. I know I do. Happy International Artist Day, everybody. You know, this isn't just another day for cake and champagne. Not that there's anything wrong with cake and champagne, but this International Artist Day feels really different for me. I don't know about you, but when I'm looking around at the world, I'm seeing a lot of changes out there. And it feels like this is a time when art is more important than it has ever been. So the reason I invited you here today wasn't cake and champagne, sadly. Instead, I called you here today because this is a call to arms or brushes or cameras or clay or whatever your weapon is to make stuff. Every artist voice is needed now. From the brash, loud voices of you younger artists, to the wise, knowing voices of you elders, the world needs you. 
the world seems to be louder than ever, full of noise. And it can deafen us if we let it. The best artists I know turn inward. They use their work to understand who they are and what they think. Their work is where they express what they've learned. That's where the best art comes from. And that's what's calling you now. Make art, make good art. Get that art into the world so that the world can become a more beautiful place and you can take your place in it. The world needs you to show up, artist. Yeah, you've been talking about this, right? You've been dreaming about this. Proof of concept time is here now. The world needs you just as much as you need it. You know, we've all given in to fear these past two years. We've all had our freak out moment. And if you're like me, you've had several of them, but that's done now. Who do you want to be moving forward? As an artist, as a human, maybe for us, there's not even a difference between who we are and that artist we are. Who do you wanna be moving forward? Let's breathe on that for a second, okay? I'm gonna look at some of the comments while we're breathing and thinking about that. Oh, Myra's here. Ah, oh, Chico, fantastic. Oh, it's so great to see you all. Greetings, 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 greetings. All right, all right. I'm so glad you guys are here. I have this theory about artists. Well, obviously I have a lot of theory about artists, but I have this theory about artists. This theory is that when we connect with that part of ourselves, that part that creates, that part that makes, that part that reveals, that's the best part of ourselves. The artist that lives inside of you is the best part of you. Don't you agree? So for me, if the artist inside of me is the best part of myself, that's the part of me that I want to lead with as I face this new world post-COVID, as I face these uncertainties moving forward, as I face this next year after this International Artist Day 2021. The truth is, we're all making it up as we go along. So don't wait for someone to give you permission to be the artist you wanna be. There are no grown-ups. I think COVID has proven that to all of us. You have to take responsibility for how you will show up as an artist. And as an artist, this is an opportunity to create a new you for this new reality to step up in a bigger way than ever before, to lead with the best part of yourself, the artist who you are. So what does that mean? I'm gonna talk about me personally for a minute because to tell you the truth, everything I tell you guys here today or in my blogs or in my, in my videos, it's all stuff I've told myself, I've written in my journal, I've had to live, I'm working really hard as an artist myself to try to stay two steps ahead of you so that I can tell you what I see up on the road ahead. These are all things that I think about constantly. So as I'm thinking about who's the artist I wanna be moving forward, I start to, I, well, I made three decisions for this artist day and I'm gonna publicly announce them here. So now I'm uh, accountable. Um, number one, I have decided to show up as the best artist I can be. I am no longer going to feel victim to time. I am going to take control and ownership of my time. No more overwhelm. I'm done with that. Now, this also means adhering to a practice, right? The practice of those things that are important, developing discipline and focus with no more excuses. 
That word discipline is a funny one. I used to hate it. It used to scare me. It sounded mean. But I've learned that the word disciple is the root of the word discipline. So if you look at the word disciple, a disciple is someone who, who is devoted to something, right? A disciple is someone who believes in something or someone. Um, that's how I want to use discipline in my work because I'm devoted to my work. That just changes the energy around that word discipline for me. I wonder if that makes a difference for you too. Okay, the second, the second way I'm going to show up as the best artist I can be, that also means I am no longer going to be victim to outside energy. I want to show up fully. I want to make thoughtful work that gets out into the world. You know, every day, like you probably, I watch the news or I listen to outside gossip or worse, people's opinions. A lot of people have, a, everybody has opinions, right? About how we should live, about who we should be, about what we should do, about what we should be thinking. Are we doing this right? Are we doing that wrong? I'm done with that. By taking responsibility for my own energy, I, I make the time and the space to quiet those outside voices and just listen to myself because that's where my best ideas are gonna come from. What if, I ask myself, what if all that stuff outside of myself doesn't matter? Ask yourself that question. What if all that stuff outside doesn't matter? What if you go in and connect with the artist you are? All right, the third way, last way, that I am publicly committing to showing up as the best artist I can be is no longer playing victim to my resources. I don't have this. I don't have enough of that. I'm ready to be creative in my problem solving, not stuck. I wanna be resourceful. I wanna be determined. Let me ask you, am I alone in these thoughts? Is this resonating with you guys at all? Let me know in the comments. I don't know if they're taking a leg, but I see some coming up. Let me see what you're writing here. Where are we? <laughs> Thank you for the necklace compliment. Good morning, everyone. Who do you want to be moving forward? I journal on this a lot. Yeah, me too. Uh, Linda, thank you. Good, good. Nancy's working like crazy on her art, pushing herself to fine tune it and get it out there. Excellent. Hi, David. Good to see you here. Thank you, Nancy. It's so strange to be doing these Facebook lives because I'm basically sitting here. It feels like I'm just talking to myself. So getting your feedback is great. From my journal to your ears, I guess, huh? This is awesome. So I want you guys right now. Oh, I'm with you on all three. Oh, thank you, Libby. Good, good. Let's all do this. Let's take control of our time, of our energy, and of our resources. Discipline. Yes. Thanks, Bill. So now I want you to think about your work. Because as I said, this is a call to arms. And I'm challenging you, each of you, to be the best artist you can be. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Is there some way that you can use your work to contribute during this time? And when I say during this time, I think we all know, no matter where we are in the world, what I'm talking about, right? How can you show up? How can you lead? How can you inspire? How can you provoke? How can you educate? This is my favorite. How can you beautify? That's all that's needed, right? Okay, I'm seeing more comments come in, so I'm gonna put on my glasses, and pretend that I don't wear them, but. Oh, I'm sorry, it took you a while to find me, Vanessa. Good, Joyce, I'm glad this is resonating. Thank you, Bill, Joe Ray. Self-accountability is key, just as commitment. Yes, 
Maggie, I finally started identifying myself as an artist. Good. Let's not wait for someone else to do it for us. Chico says, we have to take responsibility and make the art we want and we need no matter what. Yes. Hi, Nick. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's good to see you here too. I'm an artist because I believe that my work has something to say. And I'm dedicated to helping other artists because I believe that your work has something to say. And I believe that art has the power to change the world. That's why I started this Facebook group. That's why I've spent years developing the Working Artist Masterclass. If you wanna work with me, I'm doing a quick pitch here. If you wanna work with me, I am offering a 50% discount on the Working Artist Masterclass today, International Artist Day, the 25th of October. Go to my website, theworkingartist.com and use the coupon code artist, artist, because that's who you are. And if you're ready to do the work, the working artist will change your art practice so that it gets into the world in a big, beautiful way. And if you're not sure you're ready or you don't wanna take advantage of that discount today, go to my website anyway and join my mailing list at theworkingartist.com. No one on the internet shares more resources for free than I do. Why? Because I believe in the power of art. Do you? Thank you so much for being here. I wanna see more. It's so worth it. Thank you, Livy. Vera is gonna be accountable for promotion and marketing. Good, good Vera. I'm so, I'm so glad you guys are here. I didn't have champagne. Well, I thought about champagne, but I mean, it's 11 o'clock in the morning, right? So I brought sparkling water instead of sparkling wine. And I thought, I'm gonna open this up. I brought a fancy glass because I am gonna to drink to you, my friends. Happy International Artist Day. I want you to own it in the biggest way you can today and every day. Thanks so much for being here. Lots and lots of love.